I first met Lance very interestingly three weeks after he won his first world championships when he showed up with Chris Carmichael in a very straightforward, unabashed presentation, I want to become a really good cyclist. I sort of smiled. I thought, I thought winning the world championships is, if not the youngest, one of the youngest ever to win the single day road race, you already are a good one. One of Lance's advantages is he started training hard and long, very young. He became a very good triathlete uh, in his early teen years. There's almost certainly a genetic component that he had the capability of developing a heart that has a above average large volume and has the muscular strength and the capability to empty that heart chamber with each beat. Lance's heart can pump an astonishing nine gallons of blood per minute at its maximum output, while the average heart can only pump five. During that same minute, his heart will beat over 200 times. That makes it a third more effective than the average man's. If you put him in a ring with someone else, he'd be the last guy standing. And his approach to winning was just get me out there and I'll outslug whoever it is. He didn't race necessarily to win, he just raced to make people suffer to show how much stronger he was. And he raced to decimate people and to win by as much as he could, not just to win, but to humiliate people. He was national champion. He was world champion. He'd even won stages in the tour. Lance was on top of the world. I think everyone world round would have uh, said that his chances of surviving the illness were in the 30 to 40 percent range. He was a uh, world-class athlete, uh, used to having lumps and bumps and pains around his body and particularly in uh, the area on the saddle. He probably undoubtedly attributed uh, the pain and swelling in that area to uh, some injury he had suffered on the bike. One night, I got a call at dinner with the kids, and my wife were sitting there, and, and uh, pick up the phone. It's Lance. He says, hey, Oach, what are you doing? I said, I'm sitting here at the table eating dinner. He said, you sitting down? I said, yeah, I'm sitting down. What's, what's, what, do you, what do you need? I mean, Lance called me. I was at work. It was 10 o'clock at night and he told me he'd been diagnosed with cancer. That evening, the phone rings, and I hear Lance's neighbor on the other end, and he said, Linda, I don't know any easy way to tell you this, but Lance has been diagnosed with cancer. And I asked him to repeat what he just said. I could not believe what I was hearing on the other end of the line. And he repeated it, and it literally <laughs> crushed every single piece of me on the inside. This is the CT scan from when he presented uh, in 1996. As you can see, these large, whitish areas throughout his lung represent areas where the testicular cancer had deposited and grown. Uh, this should all be black. I'm not even sure he knew what he had yet. I, knew, I think he knew he had, obviously he knew he had cancer, but he didn't know to the extent that he had cancer. And this is uh, a brain CT scan, and here is one of the areas of deposits that was, uh, again, found its way to his brain and uh, uh, actually it had to be removed surgically. The impact of his treatments were in the short term debilitating, devastating, nutritionally depleting, and in every fashion he was beaten down by the treatments and the disease. Had uh, you asked me to bet on his chances of A, surviving his disease, B, uh, maintaining any athleticism after his treatment, uh, or C, when 
any Tour de France's, I obviously would have um, not taken any of those bets uh, because the odds were against him in, on every one of those scores. And first thing he said, very first thing he said, hey, Ouch, I'm gonna, I'm gonna beat this thing. His first treatment option would have included bleomycin, a chemotherapy that would have left his lungs permanently scarred, ending his career. The new treatment included a drug called iphosphamide, which although more painful and debilitating in the short term, would spare his lungs and allow him to return to the saddle. Never did I doubt, never. I, I just, the fear of losing my only child, never did I entertain the thought that, that I would lose him. I, I, I think of several low points, but, but really the reality of that low point was when Lance came downstairs after he'd already had one round of chemotherapy, found out he had two, tum two tumors in his brain and was going to have brain surgery shortly thereafter. And just before then, he comes downstairs, he sits down for breakfast, he's got a ball cap on, and he takes off his cap and he says, Mom, my hair is falling out. It's horrible. Perhaps drawing on his intense desire to win, Lance chose to attack the disease with the same effort and determination that he brought to cycling. I think his uh, physiology definitely allowed him to tolerate the chemotherapy better than the average person. His experience with pain and suffering uh, allowed him uh, to uh, emotionally and physically get through the treatments better than the average person. Uh, the fact that he was nutritionally and physically fit uh, gave him the reserves to uh, tolerate the treatment better than uh, certainly you or I. I. I know exactly what I believe that gets him up those mountains, and those are uh, long mountains, and those descents are hard and, and tough, and, and just getting through those crowds. I, I really believe that all he has to do is go back to that day that he was laying in that bed when he was so sick that he couldn't even talk on the phone or raise his head. That's what gets him up and down those mountains. It is an absolute tribute uh, to his strength, his will, his focus, and his desire to uh, be better after cancer than before uh, that allowed him to achieve what he has achieved. And uh, it remains an absolute stellar example of what people can do after cancer. Lance Armstrong was no longer a cancer patient. He was a cancer survivor. But as wretched as the disease was, it taught him something invaluable. I just wasn't as hungry as I should have been as an athlete before the illness. And so it, it, I think it you know, was this opportunity to, to to really have, it's a cliche, but to really have a wake-up call. I mean, I woke up and just thought, man, this is my life. This is, I really think this is the only shot I, got, I have at it. And uh, man, just go for it. So when Lance got cancer and he came back from that, he rebuilt his body 20 pounds lighter with the same power as a cyclist. So what he did was he, he, you took a guy who was a world professional champion and had won stages in the tour and you improved his power to weight ratio by 10%. Usually, you know, races are won by a half a percent, by 1%. To have a 10% improvement is just so astronomical that you can't imagine. Lance began to pay particular attention to his own physiology, using a battery of very specific tests to improve his performance. Metabolic profiling with lactate testing is used to assess the capability of probably 80 maybe even higher percent of the elite pro cyclists now. It's three different measures of his performance capability. Heart rate, lactate, oxygen uptake. All of them critical to performance. All of them things that uh, there would be a lot of focus on Lance tra Lance's training.